I happen to have a video camera, and so I never thought that I would put it on TV. Uh huh. But it's sort of. Um, How was it seeing your first thing on on public on television? I mean, at home. And then, <laughs> then or now? No, now, <laughs> now it's embarrassing. <laughs> Why is it embarrassing? Well, because the quality was pretty poor. I have cable and a little black and white TV at my house, and I like watching Channel 15 mm -hmm. and even 17. And every time I turn on 17, and this is not just because I work here, but every time I turn on 17 for 10 minutes, I learn something about what's happening in my community. That you would not really? That I would not have gotten otherwise. I like to watch the city council meetings and see, yeah, I guess just the city council meetings. I like a lot of the late night shows and a lot of the public people in the area get to voice their opinions on things. I think that's very valuable and most of the other stations won't do that. I do and I love it. I really do. The meetings I don't get to, I can go and watch them on Channel 17. 180,000 people in Florida whose votes were not counted constitutes about 60% of the people of the state of Vermont who in fact cast votes. And I think that that process and that result is outrageous and it is unacceptable and it is an insult to the democratic process. History is an amazing thing, sir. It does not lie. In 1777, I teamed with Sir Hillary Clinton. No, that was Henry Clinton, I'm sorry, of New York City. And we formed with the British and had treason against the revolution. We don't live in a parliamentary system, but it is only natural to expect that people like myself, who have been honored with positions of leadership, will largely support the president's agenda. And yet, more and more, I find I cannot. In order to best represent my state of Vermont, my own conscience and principles I have stood for my whole life, I will leave the Republican Party and become an independent. Control of the Senate. I have respected and admired Senator Jeffords for a long time, and he's been a good friend to me, and I believe he's doing what is true to his conscience. And I understand it, understand what has happened. I probably don't understand completely what happens in, in Congress, uh, but uh, he is being left behind, in a sense, uh, by the Republican Party, and that's too bad. If, we need to have room for the moderates and the liberals in our party. And that's why I'm sorry to see him leaving. Tragedy struck us in the United States today, and the enormous impact of it is, I'm sure, yet to be felt. Just to put things in perspective, there are, as I understand it, about 50,000 people work in the World Trade Center towers. In Burlington, there's about 40,000 residents, and so there are more people that work there than there are that live here in Burlington. And I think for people who live here in Burlington, my guess is a lot of people here are gonna know people who were affected by this. They're, we're gonna see, I think a lot of people are Burlington residents who have family and friends who are most likely to be victims of what happened today. Lots of people were like more surprised that like we were attacked and like, the people that people actually were able to get into the plane and like attack us. But what we should be more surprised about was that it actually took this long. And uh, there are blood drives going on. We'll have a number for people who want to donate blood. We do uh, envision sending some nurses and doctors either to New York or Washington. Um, we do have flight capacity to help uh, in the New York and Washington area with the National Guard, which will uh, be doing that under the auspices of the federal government, not under my uh, auspices. Botanists tell us that it's nectar 
that makes the honey so sweet. Nectar was the delicious beverage of gods, Roman and Greek. Ambrosia was the food of the gods when Greek fire saved the navy. Here in the Queen City, our ambrosia is nectar's French fries and gravy. <laughs> You have about a minute. Oh boy. My name is Lower Main Street. Some people call me Nick Shield Drop or 57 Main Street, but you can call me Lower Main Street. I spend a lot of time cleaning up the green belts down there on Lower Main Street. I'm Mary Fillmore, also from Burlington. And I would like us to consider the possibility that as grave as this situation is, it is being used to distract us from a lot of other very serious matters that are being pushed at the same time, particularly in terms of the violations of civil liberties. Now, we have already had roundups, and I'm sure that you could comment on this. We've already had roundups of citizens simply because they're from the Middle East. Most of us in this room don't happen to be among the people who are directly being attacked in that way. Doesn't mean that it isn't of equal concern to us. Seven trillion dollars of our country's wealth has disappeared. Nearly one in 10 retired people have had to retire, return to the workforce because they've lost their pensions. Young people returning home to live with their parents after graduation because they can't find a job. Companies leaving the country to avoid paying taxes or avoid paying people livable wage and corporations doing this with the support of our own government. and a political process in Washington that they rent, if not own. This, this is a major event all of our lives. And uh, for the, so many older soldiers, you know, this could be a culminating event in their careers, a chance to finally put things to, uh, you know, use some of these things we practiced for years and years. For some of you younger soldiers, you might not believe it, but it's going to be a defining experience in your lives. And it's going to be a great, great experience. Bob, what can I do for you? This is John. And my friend said, well, well, Senator, I'm having this little problem. Well, Bob, don't you worry about it. We're going to take care of that. We support John McCain. On Tuesday, I need it. I want it. I want to win in Vermont. And I would very be very honored by your support. Well, I think all of us feel cynical about politics sometimes. You know, it seems like it's a business instead of a mission. Uh, and yet, when you look at the two men standing beside me, it's an indication, in fact, that things can change, that we can overcome that cynicism. That's what this election is going to be about, and that's why I want to make sure that everybody is as enthusiastic as I am about making sure that these guys end up in Washington where they can keep on stirring up some trouble. So, Steve, tell us about your bicycle. Well, it's a project that I actually thought up about 30 years ago. I uh, started working on about four years ago after thinking some more and building a model that uh, I said, yes, this could work. Um, so then I built a working model using a conventional bicycle frame and just welding a few parts on it. Yeah, the students from the Department of uh, uh, Community Development and Applied Economics, they are brought here by their professors, and then I lecture them. Uh, I love being in the community and uh, I know it's not only selling food but also getting to know the people around. Oh, my name is Lucy Kemunya. I just came to come and buy the calling cards to call my mom in Kenya. I come from Nairobi, Kenya. Hi, I'm here with, I'm Henry and I'm here with Felipe and Paul and I'm going to start by asking them some questions. So Felipe, can you tell us about what your favorite food is? Cereal. Cereal? What type of cereal do you like? I don't know. How many believers do we have? How many? Maybe. And I remember you. <laughs> That's disgusting. He's the party's plan.
cigarette butts are trash too. Throw them away. This is an example. Throw balloon scraps away. People put garbage in Charles can. The people of Essex Junction have voted twice to be a city, one solid vote against consolidation, and that's because they like what they have, they want to keep it that way, we want to go into this century and control our own destiny, so I ask you to follow the, the statute and let us be that city and go forward. I think in a couple of years, the whole community will be better off for this endeavor. Thank you very much. You know, my friend, the, you have touched millions of people's lives. You have made their lives better. And you have given them hope. They'll never know who you are. All they'll know is that they have a chance in life. Their lives are better because of you and because you cared and because you were really the nameless person to them. That's one of the reasons why I love you, my friend. You know, the, the, the truth of it is, is that that is true of that lady, not me. And when I go home and get back to playing rock and roll with my band in my day job, he stays the course. And, and he's the one that fights for the legislation that really changes lives. The OSHA was passed uh, 38 years ago, and it was in that spirit on April 28th that the Canadian government actually uh, officially declared a, a Workers' Morning Day in Canada, and that's the only government that has officially declared, uh, the national government that has declared a day. But across this country, 26 states have memorials, and many communities and states recognize this day as a day, uh, 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 as a Workers' Memorial Day to recognize the death on the job, injury on the job, illness on the job, and a commitment to having a safe workplace. And I went down and interviewed, and I'll never forget, Sid Baker said to me, well, you know, there's some parking or uh, traffic control people, you know, crossing guards. That job's available. And I, I just looked at him, and I said, that's not what I'm interviewing, and I left. Well, apparently that was the right answer because that afternoon I got a phone call uh -huh. and Mrs. Westcott apparently had said to him, you know, I like that woman. I like the fact that she came in here and she was resolute with what she wanted to do. Hello, uh, this is Gay Symington. I'm Speaker of the House in the Vermont Legislature and this is a weekly show that we have put together on using cable access channels to help Vermonters understand some of the discussions we're having in the State House. And uh, this week, I thought we would talk about money. I have been happily married for 10 years. I have two wonderful children. I love and value the institution of marriage. And I look forward to welcoming everyone into that institution, because we should all be able to share it. It should not only be for and there's no cars or vehicle you have to walk. Most of them die because of food, thirsty, and others, wild animals, and also bandits um, kill on the way. In this camp, uh, all our kids who are in Burlington School District, uh, up to high school kids, were born in this refugee camp in Kenya. So this is where we spend almost 12 years, and there's still some others. Clickable agendas. 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 That's right, clickable meeting agendas only at channel17.org. Bring up your local municipal meeting, look at the agenda, and pick the agenda item that is interesting to you. You don't have to watch the whole meeting, just the item that interests you. Get involved with local government. Save time. Go to channel17.org. Uh, Nat Ayer and Lauren Glenn Davidian from Channel 17 and Channel 317. And we are live tonight. And so we're 
<laughs> no titles yet, so we're, we're, we're using the old style titles from the 1980s. <laughs> so um, Lauren Glenn's going to talk more about the, the TV part, but I wanted to give a very short fence viewing report. Um, 